All right, then. So first topic: forward markets. First formula that we have to study is uh, the payoff of forward rate agreement on expiry. And in a way, you don't have to know the formula because you can build some basic uh, logic on this. Let us say we've entered into a three by five FRA. The notional amount is one million. Notional amount, one million. And the contract rate, let us say, is twelve percent. Now, after ninety days, sixty-day LIBOR. After ninety days, sixty-day LIBOR turns out to be fifteen percent. Let's assume hypothetically we were long on this. What would be payoff to the long side? Instead of remembering the formula, we can build some basic intuition and build some steps on this. First step, long FRA means write an obligation to borrow at the rate of 12%, whereas the rate in the market turned out to be 15. So step number one, we have a benefit of 3%. In the second step, we will convert this to an amount. So 3% of 1 million that is going to be 30,000. However, we would have earned a profit of thirty if we could borrow for entire year. However, we are going to borrow only for two months. We are going to borrow only for two months, three by five. So, therefore, we would say thirty thousand into two by twelve or sixty by three sixty, and that would give us an amount of five thousand. And this five thousand profit will come to us sixty days from now. we are on the expiry today so this is the contract maturity period and this is the loan maturity period so the 60 days the profit will come here we want to know the value of profit today so we need to discount it backwards for a period of 60 days using the current market rate and therefore in the step number 4 we will say 5000 discounted at 1 plus 15% into 2 by 12 or 60 by 360, that would give us 2 point 2 point how much? 5. So 2.5 percent, and that amount would be how much? 48, 78. So this is how payoff for the forward markets can be calculated. Next one. Payments based on a LIBOR loan. Let us say there is a 20 million loan taken, a LIBOR overnight loan, for a period of 30 days, at a rate of 9 percent. What would be the amount of interest paid? So the thing that we remember with LIBOR is that it is an add-on rate, and it uses a 360 day convention, and therefore. The amount of cash flow can be calculated as twenty million multiplied with nine percent multiplied with thirty divided by three hundred and sixty, and whatever the amount is, that would be the payment based on the LIBOR loan. Next one is profit or loss on a foreign currency forward contract. So let us say that we have entered into on long side of a contract with a notional amount of one hundred thousand US dollar, and the contract rate was rupees sixty five for a dollar for a period of three months. After three months, the spot rate turned out to be rupees sixty seven for a dollar. we have to decide whether we have profited or we have made a loss and then by how much so the calculation is always done in the context of the base currency which is to be seen as a commodity so earlier we had a long position on the commodity we had a right to buy 1000 us dollar sorry 100000 us dollar at a price of 65 since the rate turned out to be 67 we are buying cheaper and therefore we have a profit of rupees 2 for every contract In two hundred thousand dollar, total profit would be two hundred thousand US dollar or two hundred thousand. I'm so sorry, rupees. 
Should we go ahead? Next topic, option markets and contracts. First one, intrinsic value of call. Let's say strike price is 100, spot price is 150. Then intrinsic value will simply be S minus X, which is 150 minus 100 or 0, whichever is higher. In the same fashion, if it's a put option, then the value would be X minus S or 0, whichever is higher. Because we know that intrinsic value of option can never be negative. Either it is 0 or it is a positive number. So we have done this. Time value and intrinsic value. The premium of an option is made of two parts. Intrinsic value and time value. So let us say that strike price of a call option is 100. Spot price is 150 and premium is 70. So that premium 70 call option is in the money for 50 therefore intrinsic value 50 time value would be 20. So intrinsic value plus time value is same as the premium of the option. Lower and upper bounds for options. To remember these formulas we can build a table. On the left hand side let's say write the lower values so let me call them as minimum values. On the right hand side maximum values. We will rem try to remember the sequence which is European call, American call, European put and American put. Then just build some hypothetical example that strike price is 100, spot price is 150. Therefore value of option should be S minus X s minus x building some hypothetical example of put option strike price 150 stock price 100 and therefore value of option should be x minus s and x minus s and to the first three x just attach a present value so present value of x minus s these are your minimum values and take the first term from them and put them on the right hand side in the maximum column so S, S, present value of X and X are your maximum values. That's how you can remember lower and upper bounds. Now, what if it's a dividend paying stock? Then how do we calculate lower and upper bounds? What logic you can use is if the stock pays dividend, then the value of the stock reduces after a dividend. And therefore, every time you have X, if it's a dividend paying stock, simply replace this S with S minus present value of the dividend. S minus present value of the dividend and then you have lower bounds on a dividend paying stock everywhere. S minus present value of the dividend, S minus present value of the dividend. Next one is put call parity. We have developed an easy memory technique to remember this which is sip Pepsi, be cool. So using this we would remember the formula which is S plus P is equal to B plus C. S is your stock, P is the put option premium, bond is nothing but present value of strike which is 1 plus X divided by 1 plus RFR raised to whatever is the time period and C is your call option. Next one is put call parity with assets for assets with cash flow. That means put call parity on a dividend paying stock. So your regular formula is S plus P is equal to B plus C. Since it's a dividend paying stock, you just have to add that dividend here, which would become S minus, sorry, I should have said reduce that dividend here. So S minus present value of dividend plus P is equal to B plus C. Next one 